changes what life's uneven ways. But if my Savior found me, do that sweet home home. You know I'll live with him forever. Up in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in Thank you, Lord. 
that side didn't, didn't, didn't hear you. Look to the other side and say, Jesus, we'll fix it. Jesus has a way of fixing things that are broken. We can say amen. amen. At this time, we're going to ask everyone to stand as we go to our Heavenly Father in a word of prayer. Dear gracious God and Heavenly Father, as we come to your throne of grace, we give you praise and we give you honor. We thank you, O oh God, for this lectureship. We thank you, O oh God, for those who have made preparation to feed us your word. Father, we pray that you would guide us throughout this week. Watch over us and protect us. We pray, God, that we would feed upon your word and learn the things from your word. We thank you, God, for all that you do. And everyone that's traveling here, those who are on their way, bless them to make it here safely. We give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. amen. We ought to thank God for being together at this time in this place. We call to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. And we have two very capable and experienced men of God we're here to help us to do just that. Our first speaker for this evening session, Brother Don Bernal Holly from Memphis, Tennessee. He is the minister of the Norris Road and the Southeast Side Church of Christ there in Memphis. He is one of my fraternity brothers. We not a five or any of those other Greek letters. We, we're the fraternity of G O L F. <laughs> My dolphin brother. <laughs> Amen. But we, we just we just appreciate Brother Holly. He's been preaching for over thirty years, and I know that in these things, customarily, we talk about how what school he went to and how many children he has and where he grew up and all that, but y'all don't care about that, do you? <laughs> all y'all want to know is can the man preach? Yeah. And, and I, will let, I will let him answer that question with his presentation, but I'll tell you before he gets up, the man can preach. Right. And we're here for, for a good time. He's going to bring us a word from the Lord. We're going to ask for Ron McMillan to give us a verse of a song. A verse. <laughs> one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one verse. Is that all right? After the next verse of this song, the next speaking voice you will hear, Brother Don Burnell Holly from the North Road and Southeast Side Churches of Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Yes. He said one verse. <laughs> he didn't say how long. <laughs> I look to praise Yeah. 
The church say amen. Amen. The church say amen again. Amen. She's glad to be in Chicago on Resurrection Sunday night. Will you smile and say amen again? Amen. We want to first of all acknowledge the Almighty God yes. as we continue to give thanks to the great and preeminent head of the church, Jesus Christ, his beloved son. Yes. Uh, there are some scholars that are sitting around right now debating whether or not Jesus is the rose of Shaft. Yeah. Yeah. But Bush, there's another group of scholars who maybe in their own mind, on some intellectual plane, are trying to rap, wrestle with whether or not he's the wheel in the middle of his yeah. 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 But we do believe and we're absolutely sure yes. that he is the root of the offspring of David. Yes. 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 He's the bright of the morning yes. star. Yes. Yes. Matthew, the tax collecting Jew says his name is called Jesus because he saves his people from their sins. It's just a good time to be alive. Good time to be standing on top Saul rather than top Saul standing on us. Good. We want to express our appreciation to Brother Mike Millen for a wonderful job leading tonight. I guess the lady can see that the brethren came in to give Brother Bush some relief because Brother Bush was and I said, Gerald Bush, Gerald Bush is supposed to preach tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sometimes in the Lord's church, they'll hook that preacher up to a cloud and just for working with it. <laughs> glad to see Brother Bush sitting over there resting now. We're going to try to get out of his way because we're going to loose him and let him go. I want you to see the love of my life and the wife of my yesterday's youth. I've been preaching the gospel for 35 years. I started preaching the gospel six months before we got married. So she knew she was marrying the gospel preacher. I want to ask Sister Patricia Holly to stand so that you can see her. Somebody ought to say something. But here's Winston was living. We'd be sitting at the lecture in Terrell in Southwestern. He'd come by there and stop and look. And after a while, he'd come by and stop and look, and he'd lean over and say, boy, how'd you get that pretty girl? <laughs> we have four adult children, and our middle child is here tonight, Patrice, is in grad school. We're also proud of her. She's studying to be a, a doctor of nurse anesthesia. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is she's our retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice, would you stand tonight? Amen. <laughs> We certainly want to thank Brother Walker for uh, conducting this session tonight and, and for giving those words of uh, introduction because you see, after all, we've been in Church of Christ all these years. We know what it is. Or as we would say in the country, we know what it is. It's two songs, a prayer, and another song. And after that, Brother Iverson, the church is saying, is there any word from the Lord? Matthew, the eighth chapter. We launch at verse 18 and we land at verse 26 tonight. I'd like to have all of the preachers from Memphis to stand with those scoundrels won't leave their pulpits on Easter Sunday. So most of them are en route. But I looked out there and I saw Brother Charles Ray Peterson, a great gospel preacher at the South Parkway East Congregation where Brother Nathaniel Brayton served for many years. And Brother Peterson has been there for over 20 years. He's a great gospel preacher yeah, right, yeah. and a good friend of mine. Good to see you tonight, Brother Peterson. Matthew chapter 8, we launch at verse 18, and we land at verse number 26. Is it all right to read the Bible? Amen. At the National Lecture yeah. Show. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment, watch this now, to depart unto the other side. We'll come back and talk about that other side in short time. A certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man has not where to leave him. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. 
when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there was a great tempest in the sea. Insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he, but Jesus, was asleep. And the disciples came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Another synoptic gospel said, the writer says something like, Carest thou not that we perish? And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? O oh, ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. All right now, and there was a great calm. I want to talk for a little while tonight from the subject calm in the middle of the storm. Calm in the middle of the storm. Two points in this brief lesson. Point number one, the master is on the ship. Since we understand that the master is on the ship, we need to be calm. Right in the middle of life's storm. The contextual setting and situation of our text under consideration tonight finds our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ involved in a certain sector of his ministry where biblical scholars have called it the year of popularity. In this context, it, biblical scholars have said that his first year of ministry was the year of inauguration. And they said that the second year was the year of popularity. You see, Jesus was popular because he knew how to help people. Yes, sir. And if we want to grow churches that attract people and have the kind of magnetism that we desire, the Lord desires, if you help people, you can't stop people from coming. Jesus knew how to heal the sick. Jesus could raise the dead. Jesus could give sight to the blind. Jesus could call lame men to walk. And when you're helping somebody like that, you can't stop the people from coming. The context, we don't have time to deal with it, uh, you know, comprehensively tonight, but in Matthew chapter 5, he goes up the mountain. And when he goes up this mountain, he uh, gets involved in something called the world-renowned Sermon on the Mount. And it has been said that whatever goes up must come down. And so when he gets to the end of chapter 7, the same Lord that went up the mountain comes down the mountain uh, at the end of chapter 7. And so when we get to uh, Matthew chapter 8, when Jesus comes down the mountain, the same mock multitude that followed him to the mountain is waiting on him to come down the mountain. Because he had people before he went up, and so they said, yeah, I'll wait. And I'll be here when they come back down. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 1, even when he come down the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you will. And he said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And you see, at the time of the writing of this text, Leprosy was considered to be an incurable disease. But because this man knew of Jesus and he knew about Jesus, he believed in his heart that Jesus could help him. And so when Jesus came down the mountain, he said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Jesus put forward his hand and touched him and said, I, I will that you be clean. And immediately his leprosy was clean. And Jesus said, see the detail, no man, and you know that ain't going <laughs> We've got something here that's incurable. And Jesus healed this man. And by telling him, don't tell it, you know us, don't you? That means tell everybody. In other words, if you want it to be told, say, tell everybody. And then maybe we'll do the opposite thing. You do know in the beginning of time, God said you could have everything except one thing. And we, we, we went away from the everything. And so what about this one thing? Yeah. And that's, well, I need to move on here. Yeah, yeah. You see, if we're going to be successful in our churches, we have to know more than theology. All right. yeah. We have to have Negroes. <laughs> we have to understand people yeah. as well as we understand the word and the will of God. If all the preachers know.
knows is the word, he's going to have some trouble. Yeah. But you see, when you know people, yeah. you will not allow people to cause you stress and bring harm. I'm moving on here tonight. It comes down in Matthew chapter 8. And then uh, he gets into verse 5. So when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching or begging him. We don't have time to deal with the context now. But, but you know, Capernaum is an interesting place. Because you see, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Right. To fulfill the word of the Lord that was spoken by the prophet, probably about Michael 5 and verse number 2. Thou Bethlehem be free. Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. That is to be ruler of old Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Even though he was born in Bethlehem, he couldn't stay there and preach. Because that was a bloodthirsty king that was sitting on the throne that heard that there was a child born to be king. So Jesus had to go down into Egypt to fulfill what God had said through the prophet Hosea. Out of Egypt have I called my father. And then when he comes out of Egypt, he looks in and peeps in there and sees that a Herod's bloodthirsty son, Archelaus, is sitting on the throne. And so he goes over the mighty Jordan River. Comes up the backside of Palestine, crosses back over the Jordan River, and lands in Nazareth, and he's and he's raised in Nazareth of Galilee. But you know us, don't you? A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country. So he's born in Bethlehem, can't go to work there. He's raised in Nazareth, can't do nothing. Maybe just feed, heal a few sick folk back. Because they're going to tell him stuff like, what we heard that you did in Capernaum, do here. Yes. And then uh, the synoptic gospel writer calls Capernaum his own city. Because when he left uh, Nazareth, he took up a home in Capernaum. We don't have time to deal with all that. As a matter of fact, it wasn't even his own home. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. It was probably Peter. Andrew's home. And what happens here is he meets a centurion. This is a Roman soldier who is a man that has some authority. Uh, he's managing, administrating a hundred Roman soldiers. And the text says that he said to Jesus, my servant is lying at home and he's sick of palsy. My servant is a paradigm. My servant is paralyzed and uh, he's grieved and tormented and Jesus said, I will come yeah. and heal him. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yes. Our Lord was a caring Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Our Lord was uh, a compassionate Lord. Yeah. This man was not a Jew, but Jesus was going to have him. Yes, but now, before I go to the seat, I'm going to say this now, and I'm going to us to receive this in the spirit of love. It's a dead cat on the line. All right. When we allow people that are outside of Christ to show a, a, a greater and a deeper faith than those of us who are in Christ. Now, I'm not at the time of the writing of this text. Christ hadn't died on the cross yet, but the Hebrew, the Jew, the descendants of Abraham were in covenant relationship with God. And it's amazing how all through God's word, many times folk that are not in covenant relationship with God show more faith than those of us who are in covenant relationship with God. If y'all help me, I'll be down here in a minute. He said, come and heal the servant. Jesus said, I will come and I'll heal him. But now watch this, the difference between them and us. Y'all gonna help me here? You see, they don't have an entitlement mentality. They are respectful. They don't demand attention. Jesus said, I will come and the man said, oh, wait a minute. You don't have to do all that. You gotta understand, I'm a man in authority. You know, I tell one man to go here. He goes there. I tell one man to go there. And he goes, Lord, I know who you are. You don't have, you don't have to come to my house. Is anybody listening here? He, look, what, he, what he basically said was, Jesus, you can just stand right here. And just speak the word. Just, just speak the word. 
cause you have the power of the Holy Spirit. You can heal the Sabbath by remote control. Right. Right. You better have to bring somebody in the house. You better have to bring somebody in covenant relationship with God. They say, you, no, I don't want you to just come. I want you to come right now. Is that all right? And so Jesus said, this is deep. Jesus said, I have seen this kind of thing in the house of Israel. Jesus goes on to say that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of God. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into other darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't want to get too theological in here tonight, but what the Lord was really saying was that's going, going to be a time when this word is going to be taught and preached, and the folks in the house yeah, are going to reject the word. Yeah, and then those in Israel are going to have to sit down and yeah. watch the Gentilian word. Yeah. Come and sit down with Abraham, yeah. Isaac, and Jacob, while yeah. the insiders will be on the outside. Yeah. And the outsiders will be on the inside. Because many times the outsiders have more respect than those who are on the inside. Jesus said, I'm looking at this outside. And I've never even seen this kind of faith on the inside. We need to get out from here tonight. I'm going to close this Bible so y'all think I'm getting ready to quit. Look, watch that. What that happened was. On top of the wall. I mean, Jesus was doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. If y'all hit me, I'll be down here. Yeah. Watch this. Jesus said, "Let us pass over oh, yeah. Yeah. to the other side." Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, if some of us were in the crowd. We said, "Why do we got to go to the other side?" <laughs> it just appears to me the things are going good on this side. Yeah. He was teaching the word, and there were masses of people, and it got late. And the disciples said, you got to send these folk home. Yeah. You can't feed all these folk. Yeah. I hear our quietness. Yeah. And Jesus said, what do you have? There's a lad, there's a lad, there's a boy here with five loaves. Yeah. And two fishermen. But what is that? In the middle of all of this. Multitude. Jesus said, make the men sit down. Yeah. And make them sit down in fifth. Yeah. Oh, that ought to be a lesson in that somewhere. Yeah. Oh, we've always been in the structure yeah. organization. Don't just make them sit down. Right. Let them sit down in the 50s and then be blessed. Yeah. Them. And then when they got through eating, they had more. When they got through eating, than they had when they started. Yes, sir. And so then you go look. Y'all go, y'all, y'all have to get out from here. Because I know we want to get worse, but y'all don't help me. And then there's a man with leprosy. You're looking at him, shaking your head, you know. And even when you get through the praying for him, you go in the other room, you say, you tell your partner, he ain't gonna make it. He that's no cure for this. And Jesus heals him. And then the centurion himself is sick, he's a paralytic. And Jesus doesn't even go to the man's house because the man has so much faith. He said, Jesus, look, I don't want to put you out like that. Just stand right here and speak the word. I know it. And, and look, 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 he healed the man from where he was standing. And now Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. You know us, though. I'm not talking about the outside. I'm talking about those Ray, you are in a covenant relationship with God. Now we got to go over that. Look like to me things are going well over here. Now we got to go over that. Now we come to a place called the Sea of Galilee. Also known as Lake Gennesaret. Also known as the Sea of Tibet. I see y'all smile. So that's a bit of a scholar in the house here tonight. So now they get on the ship. Yeah. And because Jesus says, let us pass over to the other side. Yeah. I think I need to say while I'm here that just because we get on the ship with Jesus, 
That does not mean that the storms are going to stop coming. They did what Jesus asked them to do. They got on the ship with Jesus and they were going to the other side. But you see, the sea of Galilee is like life today. I don't want to get too heavy here. We talk about the geographical tendency. The Sea of Galilee, the surrounding mountains, and what would happen with the winds, and how you could be just sailing smooth on the Sea of Galilee, and then out of nowhere, a storm would come. Let's just suffice it to say that even when we get on the ship with Jesus, the storms are still going to come. That's right. See, I'm a little lazy now, and I lose something, leave something everywhere I go. <laughs> and Jesus, they were on the ship with Jesus, and the storm still came. Yes, sir. Now, here we are as members of the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Here we are as members of the church of Christ. Yes, sir. This yes, sir. is the church that was in the mind of God before he framed the word. Yes, sir. And watch this church was established. Thank you, Gerald. There's never been a need for the establishment of any other. <laughs> Jesus is yes, on this ship, yes, but storms are going to keep on coming. Yes, but no matter what happens, we need to stay on this ship yes, with sir. Jesus. Yes, and when storms come, we need to remember past storms. And when we remember how the Lord has brought us out before, we need to be able to say, he did it before. Our Lord can do it again. There's no need to panic. Why? Because the first point is the master is on the ship. And when we understand that the master is on the ship, we got to be calm. Right in the middle of the storm. But you know us, don't you? Storm came. And they panicked. Preachers, are you listening? See, that's why God made us to put us to do what we do. Ain't nobody saying amen anymore. Are there any elders in the house? Deacons in the house. There ought to be a huge difference in the way leadership responds versus the way membership responds. Uh, membership, you know, we're looking at that level of expectation. Is that when a storm comes, some folks are going to panic all over the place. But preacher man, deacon man, shepherd man, the master is on the ship. And since the master is on the ship, we need to be calm. Right in the middle of the storm. Storm came and Jesus was on the ship. But they did have sense enough even when they panic to go check with the Lord. They couldn't do anything about the storm. But they could go talk to the storm breaker. Y'all gonna help me here. And 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 you got to be careful about panicking because you even talk to the Lord nonsensically. Don't you care? Don't you care? Don't you care? We gonna die. We really didn't want to go to the other side because things were doing well on this side. Here we are going to the other side. Storm, because water is out of the lake and in the boat. You down here asleep. What they were really saying was, Jesus, you are the cause of the trouble. Saying to those boys, why are you so fifty? Steps to the brow of the ship and says, peace. Be still. Then he goes back to the boys and says, why are you so fifty? Is your faith. That's all he said. Can you see him walking away? And they start looking at each other. What man of man is this? I gotta leave you now. 
the middle of the storm. The master is on the ship. Yes, sir. And since we know that the master is on the ship, we need to be calm. Yes, sir. Right in the middle of life's storm. All who gather here tonight, we commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build us up in the most holy faith. Yes, sir. Grant us an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. God bless my father. Amen. 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 Amen.